you're at a networking event and the often dreaded inevitable question always pops up. So tell me, what do you do? Four words, complete dread. What do I do? How do I explain it without being boring to this person? Will they understand what it is that I do if I explain it to them in under a minute? The ask for your elevator pitch can evoke sweat, fear, and tears. But if you spend time crafting your pitch in advance and practicing it, you may get what you hope for, and that is an invitation to follow up. Today, I'm sharing the essential elements for a sales professional's elevator pitch. Stick around. Hey everyone, it's Leanne, and it's a question that can create anxiety in any of us. So tell me, what is it that you do? It's an invitation to deliver our elevator pitch, but if we haven't practiced it in advance, it can come out as mumble jumble. At least it does for me. And it can not only be embarrassing, but if I don't interest my new friend, then it won't warrant a follow-up. And that, my friend, is the true wasted opportunity. So today I'm providing you some quick tips on how you can craft your elevator pitch. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that little bell to be notified of new content. I'm delivering personal branding tips each week and I don't want you to miss a thing. And stick around to the end of the video. If you're struggling with what to write and what to say in your elevator pitch, this bonus strategy might just give you the fuel you need to create something spectacular. So let's take a look at your elevator pitch. Tip number one, decide on the goals of your pitch. For most of us sales professionals, that goal is likely to introduce our client to our product or service, but we need to do so in a way that'll get us to the further tips in this list, and that is to create interest and earn the right to follow up. Tip number two, be clear and easy to understand. Your new friend should walk away with a good understanding of what it is that you do. In fact, they should be saying to themselves, oh yeah, I, I get it. And they make a connection with your product or service. Tip number three, your pitch should be of a reasonable length. Most people suggest between 20 to 40 seconds for your pitch or the equivalent of a ride in an elevator. So visualize getting on the elevator at the ground floor, a stranger jumps into the elevator with you and you have the opportunity to share what it is you do and how you impact your community. Tip number four, ensure all of your keywords are included. Now, what exactly is a keyword? Well, it's the word that your potential audience or client would pick up on that would elicit an emotional response and create interest. So ensure your pitch includes those words and they will pick up on them and ask you further questions. Tip number five, don't do the selling during the pitch. The pitch is kind of the invitation where relationships begin and you're almost planting a seed to find common points of interest so that you're both encouraged to learn more about another in future conversations. This isn't the time for the hard sell. We need to leave that a little bit later in the relationship. Tip number six, create interest. The words that you choose and the energy you would portray when delivering your pitch should leave your new friend wanting to learn more about you. Find the right words, project energy and passion for what it is you do, and you've created a connection with your new friend. Tip number seven, and this is my favorite one, is earn the privilege of a follow-up. The elevator pitch should leave them wanting more and should earn you the privilege to ask for contact information so that you can follow up with them and further the dialogue. And tip number eight, practice makes perfect. Once you've checked all the boxes on the seven tips that I've outlined, now it's time to practice. Practice with a colleague, practice in front of your mirror, but make sure that you can deliver your elevator pitch smoothly, with energy, and seamlessly. Remember, the goal is to create interest through your words and through your energy. 
So as you're practicing, make sure that it comes across as very natural and not a rehearsed pitch. And here's the bonus tip. If your position is difficult to articulate, consider asking them a question to give some context about what it is that you do. So here's an example for you. In my role as a site selection specialist for Conference Direct, it's such a niche role in my industry and it's somewhat hard to describe in only 30 seconds. So instead, I sometimes lead with this question. I ask my friend, have you ever attended a conference before? Chances are my friend has. So now I can say, well, that conference was organized by a professional and I help those professionals find venues that will meet your needs as a conference attendee and the goals of you and your organization at the event. So I've given them a little bit of context on what it is I do by leading with some common ground. See if that strategy will work for you. Is it time to brush up on your elevator pitch? If so, I'd love to hear what tip most resonated for you as you start to craft a new pitch for this year. For more personal branding tips and tricks, check out my personal branding playlist here or hop on over to leannecalderwood.com and check out my five dimensions of personal branding framework. This is an outline of the things that you can consider when growing your own personal brand. I look forward to hearing more about your branding journey and if we ever meet, to hearing your elevator pitch as well. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now.